What is going on everybody? My name is Drew here and what I have here is a 2011 13 inch MacBook Pro. This specific MacBook Pro has been featured on my YouTube channel almost a year ago and I got this for about $19. If you look at this closely as you can see this is a Frankenstein of a MacBook. I mean I got most of these parts from different places and as far as i remembered i believe the screen got cracked so this display alone was whatever this is was from a donor back then i didn't have the funds to upgrade this to a ssd but now i have an ssd available i think it's the right time to put an ssd on this 2011 macbook pro because these macbooks are still plenty fast for what they do even today taking a closer look at this macbook pro this is an early 2011 13 inch with a 2.3 gigahertz sandy bridge i5 2011s were the first 13 inch macbook pros to feature an i series chip before this the 2010 had a Core 2 Duo. The only way for you to get an i-series chip on a MacBook Pro was to upgrade to the 15 inch. But now for 2011, we have an outstanding i5 dual core processor. What's even crazier is that in the previous year, 2010, the 15 inch i-series only had dual cores. You could basically get similar performance from the 15 inch now into a 13 inch MacBook Pro. Of course, we have eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. We have the glorious Intel HD Graphics 3000, which is an absolute piece of crap. The HD Graphics 4000 wasn't so bad the upcoming year, but the HD 3000, in my opinion, just doesn't cut it even today. And also because it doesn't really support any metal. We have a 1280 by 800 display, now that might sound pretty low by today's standards, which is absolutely true, but the color reproduction and whatnot is still plentiful even today. And you know, if you adjust your eyes and learn about the compromises with this display, you actually find that it doesn't really bother you as much, aside from launching applications or websites that require a lot of space. Storage wise in this, I did not touch the 500 gigabyte hard drive that this thing came with back when it was $19. The whole point of this is I am very much curious to see how this thing will perform in 2025. We already have seen 2011 15 inch MacBook Pros perform pretty decently in 2025, but a lot of the times people will be buying these 13 inch specifically because of its portability. Is it worth it in 2025? But in order to answer that question, what we need to do obviously is to upgrade this to an internal SSD. This is very important because these 5200, 7200 RPM drives are just not gonna cut it. To give you an example, we're just gonna go ahead and open system preferences right here and just look at how slow that thing loads. Safari right here, it takes a lot of time. Now granted, I believe this hard drive is very healthy for what it is so you could see how it's not really struggling or isn't taking as much time as a regular going bad hard drive would be i'm gonna go ahead and close this flip it on its back and it's time to upgrade best parts about this macbook air unibody generation before the retina macbooks is the fact that you could easily just upgrade this with ease these screws right here only take Phillips. It should be readily available in a lot of stores now. And if you need to, link will be down in the description. Oh, we are missing screw right there. Taking all the screws out, we can go ahead and check out the battery and everything else. And I just realized this battery isn't even a real genuine Apple battery. We'll definitely replace that at some point. For now, it seems like it's working totally fine. You can see how easy accessible this 2011 MacBook Pro is. And this is true from 2009 all the way to 2012 unibody MacBook. They are so easy to access. You can easily replace the display, the fans, the speakers. You can even replace the disk drive to another hard drive to do a RAID 0 for both uh, SSDs. If you install an SSD here and an SSD here, that's pretty cool, right? And then of course we have a user replaceable battery, which is really easy and just held by two screws. Can't forget about the RAM right here, which we could go up to 16 gigabytes if we would like. Something to remind you guys that back in the day, these were very accessible computers. So if you're looking for something this accessible, I think this might be a MacBook for you. In order to remove the hard drive, we need to uninstall or remove this caddy holder right here, which is held by two Phillips head. And voila, 
I don't know why I did this duct tape situation. All we have to do is remove these mounting screws. Now, before you guys say, why aren't you changing the thermal paste? Well, jokes on you, after the video of my $19 project, I essentially replaced everything from the thermal paste down to the whole chassis itself. I absolutely love these dusters right here. Put our back cover back on. We have completed all screws, so it's time to boot it up. We're gonna shuffle this with my eyes closed and see how this goes because my eyes are shot right now and I don't know which one I would be picking, actually. That's very funny. I'm looking away, I'm not seeing anything. I'm gonna pick left side. All right, Monterey. Monterey it is. We're gonna go ahead and install Mac OS Monterey on this 2011 MacBook Pro. So I have installed Mac OS Monterey using Open Core Legacy Patcher on this computer, but you could also see how hot it is getting. And you can hear those fans, or in this case, fan spinning. For the most part, that's really what you're gonna get when it comes to running Monterey with the HD 3000 graphics. I do believe Big Sur would be a better pair for this 2011 machine right here. And that is solely because of that Intel HD 3000 graphics, which just isn't going to cut it, unfortunately. Because this is only a 1280 by 800 display, I do believe it does help a lot when it comes to that weak graphics. And at the moment, right now, I am installing Photoshop as well as Lightroom. And you can already see we have some outdated versions. So when it comes to Adobe Suite or Creative Cloud, we do have two download an older version, meaning we can't really use any of the newest AI features on the Creative Cloud or Photoshop or Lightroom Classic. The most hilarious part about Coconut Battery is that it's reading here 101.5%. So it's basically saying, hey, look, we have over capacity. Now that we have fully downloaded everything, we're gonna go ahead and open Google Chrome here. When it comes to using this in 2025, this MacBook is totally fine. You're not gonna have any hiccups, although it might be just on a slower side of things, you're never gonna have any issues with that. So we're gonna go ahead and type my name here. And man, I just completely forgot how good these keyboards were, as well as the trackpad. The trackpad on this, as well as this keyboard, it's never gonna get old, even a decade later. Now this MacBook is from early 2011, and the fact that the gestures are still fully functional, here and there you're gonna get some hiccups, but we're gonna go ahead and check out my YouTube channel here and you could see that we could easily browse the internet. Skip, we don't need that ad. For the most part, in my honest opinion. Essentially, I found this on Facebook. It's basically part of a unit or a lot. Got it for about I don't think you should run this with anything more than a 1080p quality video. If you're gonna run anything more than that, you're basically wasting resources. You're wasting resources by the fact that this display is only a 1280 by 800 display. For this 2008 model year. The now the speakers on this is surprisingly pretty good. They might not have the punch or that bass, but they are definitely loud and clear enough for you in 2025. Charge, which means we should be able to get the most out of this 2008 machine performance-wise. Now you can see opening Lightroom Classic on this is surprisingly snappy. It loads up a bit, give it a few seconds, but I mean, what do you expect for a 2011 machine? This thing is surprisingly usable. Right off the bat, you could see the screen real estate is really just not enough. And even if you go to full screen, yeah, that's not gonna cut it. And that's because of that low resolution display. Now, what I have here is a Canon R6 with 20 megapixels. And at the time, I believe a regular Canon camera would have about 18 megapixels on it. So. It really isn't a big difference. I think the only time you're gonna really start struggling with high resolution cameras is when you reach the 40 megapixel mark on this computer. It is not reading my SD card. Oh, are we reading it or are we not reading it? Totally normal behavior, especially on a 2011 machine for that SD card to not work properly. But because this is a MacBook full of usable ports, we have an SD card reader here that we can just plug in and there you go. Look at that, it works properly. And now we can export all the photos I took 
this computer earlier. Now you can see how this is surprisingly smooth. Okay, let's go ahead and open this and import these files right here. The only time I believe when it comes to editing, the only issues with photo editing on this machine is the fact that the USB is only at 2.0, which means if you have a lot of files to export or import, it's going to take a long time compared to a USB 3. You can see we could easily just zoom in, zoom out, and we can in fact even edit. So if we're gonna go ahead and bring up the brightness a bit right there and go down to the details area, turn down the sharpening just a bit. There are a couple of things that you can't really use on Lightroom with Monterey and OpenCore Legacy Patcher and the fact that this isn't metal supported, noise reduction isn't supported because it's not compatible. But we have a lot of things that we could still use here. We could transform and keep this even. Let's bring out the shadows. And you can see how this is perfectly usable. The only really big issue in my opinion is the fact that we really do not have a lot of screen real estate. Now we're gonna go ahead and reduce the highlights over here. Now we have a fully edited photo using the 2011 MacBook Pro. All right, moving on to Photoshop 2024. I believe this is the last officially supported version for Monterey. So on top of the fact that we are already running on an unsupported version of macOS on this 2011, we are also running an unsupported version of Adobe Photoshop. And again, we are having some compatibility issues over here. Your graphics processor is incompatible. We don't have any metal support, GPU is not supported, and insufficient RAM, which I digress. That's just because we don't have any proper drivers for Photoshop. But let's just press OK and see how this goes. So we need to do 1920 by 1080 display. And then we can import, go to desktop, and edit the one that we just exported from Lightroom. Let's go ahead and see if we can zoom in smoothly. No, we cannot. Text right here, $19 MacBook in all caps. So we can do clickbait. And then change it to white. There you go. And obviously we want this to be an aerial. And then we're gonna do aerial bold. Go to the blending options over here. Drop a shadow so we can have some depth to that text. So you can see how this is a very usable experience. But if you look closely to the display right here, it is a bit rough when it comes to the quality. And you could definitely noticeably see that as we make this text a lot smaller. And there's a lot of aliasing around the canvas. Export as. And because this is a 1080p, this should be pretty easy to export. We just need to put it in JPEG, put it all to the highest quality, save, bam. So you can see how this is plenty usable. Again, there's just a lot of hurdles and hiccups along the way when it comes to just using this for productivity. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys with these older machines probably have either four gigabytes or eight gigabytes of memory. And you can already see eight gigabytes, it's just not cutting it in 2025. We are already swapping files and memory use at this moment in time and idle is about already four gigabytes. I highly suggest if you ever get a unibody MacBook that is fully upgradable to max out the memory. I mean, these DDR3 memories aren't really gonna cost you a lot. In fact, probably the most would be around 25 bucks if you find it on a good deal. We could simply upgrade this to a whopping 16 gigabytes of RAM and it would give us a lot more usability. Now that we have finished editing in our editing session, we can start playing some video games. And why not play Minecraft, our favorite game ever. Now this is running the latest version of Minecraft and that is because we are running again open core legacy patcher. So we have booted up to Minecraft and definitely frame rate isn't on our side at this moment but we could definitely tweak a couple of things with this. Let me go ahead and go to function f3 right here. We are hovering around 20 frames per second but that is also because we are all maxed out. Fast, Smooth lighting is off, just brighten up the environment in general and turn off everything. You can see it's a lot more usable. And hey there little guy. Minecraft is a very CPU intensive game. And so from the last video, you guys have seen that the Core 2 duos are just not cutting it anymore when it comes to Minecraft. And this is also a dual core CPU, just like the Core 2 duo, but because this has hyper-threading technology. We do need to run Optifine if you want to have better frame rate for Minecraft here. Because this has an integrated graphics compared to the older MacBooks I've shown with Minecraft in the past on this YouTube channel, the HD 3000 graphics is, in my opinion, is by far the worst ever. I don't know why Apple decided to do that when they had the opportunity to run NVIDIA graphics on this because it isn't a great graphics at all. I mean, it is not good at all. The HD 4000 is a lot better when it comes to 
practice having better graphical power. Nothing personal, buddies. I'm just trying to do my job here as a YouTuber and blow up everything. Light it up. <laughs> oh, man. You can see gaming on this might be possible, but a lot of times it might be just really down to that graphics. And CPU is good, but the graphics is holding it this time. Golems are quite robust, aren't they? I mean, they are made out of iron. <laughs> okay, overall, this 2011 13-inch MacBook Pro is still plenty usable in 2025. The keyboard is great, the speakers are surprisingly decent, and that trackpad is still plenty usable, and it has a lot of real estate, and by far, in my opinion, it's still one of the best trackpads ever. And that is every trackpad after the pre-unibody era of MacBooks. There is nothing that can come close to it. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. 2011 MacBook Pro, still usable, but discretion is already advised. Peace. This summarizes everything about this 2011 MacBook Pro.